whenever you shoot something, especially when it's an interview, maybe in a corporate environment, aside from your camera, your lens, lights, and obviously your talent in front of the camera, you may also need to have a director's monitor or an assist monitor or a monitor for your clients, for your script to see where the actor or interviewee actually sees on his or her prompter. But what if you can have both in a single device? A monitor for your camera and another one for your prompter or laptop. You perfect send me this Delta folding monitor to review and to use. I get to keep the monitor and they don't get to see the video before it's released. So here is what I think of it, the good, and the not so good because no product is perfect. For this particular job, this is the setup I had. For the single camera interview, I was using a Blackmagic 6K Pro with an Irix Cine lens, the 15mm. It's a full frame lens, so put it on a Super 35 sensor like the Blackmagic one. It's roughly around 21, 22 mil. I was using a field world prompter for the iPad and a software called Prompter Plus connected to both my iPhone as a remote control and the iPad as a display. This way I can see on my phone what the iPad is showing and what the person in front of the camera is saying so I can see in real time if they're struggling with the prompter, I can back up, I can restart the whole sentence, I can go slower, speed up the text if their flow is good and so on. So this can also be viewed by the client without anyone breathing over your shoulder, which is always nice. I find this much better than the remote controller, the physical gadget the, the prompter came with, but this is not about the prompter. But if you do use it with corporate interviews, scripted interviews, or shoot different courses, these monitors are amazing. The U-Station from Delta is actually two 15.6 inch folding monitor dual display with a built-in stand. A dual stack monitor adopts two foldable screens. The folding monitor can be placed at an adjustable angle and the screen folds to either put it flat on the table, put it in an inverted V shape so you can see from both sides or how I use it to see for yourself and also for your clients what is happening on camera, either a reference for your shoot from a laptop a script from your prompter and what the camera is seeing. The monitor comes with all the cables you can think of, normal HDMI to micro HDMI, USB-C to USB-A. To power the monitors, connect them to phones, laptops and cameras that have full HDMI ports such as the 6K Pro. So what you get is one 15.6 foldable dual screen, two Type-C to Type-C cables, one mini HDMI to HDMI cable, one USB-A to USB-C cable. On the website, they say you get one power adapter. My monitor didn't come with a power adapter. It also has a 75 Visa mount on the back. The actual mount I bought separately because I needed something to mount the monitors on a C-stand or any type of tripod so I can move them however I want it to on set. I bought this from Toman, which is a German site. It supports up to 5 kilos. It's from Koenig and Meyer. It's roughly around 20 euros. And I bought this set that comes with this clamp that goes on the C-stand. You attach it to the Visa mount plate. And the C-stand can hold the entire weight of the Delta monitors. It's for attaching small LCD screens to a floor stand using a swivel joint. It holds up to 5 kilograms. It swivels up to 250 degrees. It weighs around 0.65 kilograms. I have it now connected to my camera with a wireless video transmitter. So the transmitter is connected to my external monitor with an HDMI cable. And the receiver is connected to the monitor above. Also with an HDMI to a micro HDMI on the side. The monitor below is connected to my MacBook Air M1. I'm looking above to see what I'm doing with my hands. They're connected with an USB-C to USB-C, also on the side of the monitor. But you need to have them connected to a V-mount or any type of power because you don't get to see both of them unless they're connected to a, a wall socket, like a normal plug them in, in a wall socket or connected the way I do it via a V-mount. Now what I don't like, if you have a lower spec PC or a MacBook Air M1, 
like I do, the M1 doesn't support two displays out of it. If you run a MacBook Pro or any type of Windows PC, you'll do fine. But don't expect that from the MacBook Air 1. So it's not the displays, it's the laptop. But if you found a way around this, I would sure love to know. I do not use the dual monitor uh, mirror function, so I have no use for the same image on both monitors at the same time, especially when I'm on set. But if you were able to fold it on a table and have two people viewing it at the same time, it would work perfectly, I'm sure. So if that's a function for you and you found a way to make it work by attaching it to a MacBook Air, let's say, hit me up. I would sure love to know how you did it. When it comes to connectivity, you can run either the cables from the side, as is. I use a simple Velpro color cord to organize them just because it's, it's much easier for me to color code them. You can see them as they stand out from all the gray and black cables. Or you can use some 90 degree USB-C adapters to hide the cables behind the actual monitors for an overall better look and productivity. Usually the same stand I run my boom mic on is the same stand I attach my Delta folding monitors as it's close enough to the camera and it's the best angle so I can see what's on the camera and better control the camera at the same time when I need to. I do like the quality of the product. It's metal, it's heavy, it seems durable. The stand it comes with does a great job. It seems a bit flimsy, but it's not. It can hold a lot of weight. The menu is easy to navigate and the overall look and feel is premium. What I don't like, mine didn't come with a wall socket, but I just use either a V-mount battery or a normal Sony MPF that has any sort of USB-A to USB-C socket to connect the monitor because it does require you to plug it in to run if you use it, let's say, as a monitor for a prompter. What I did was buy a cage for my iPad, a cage from Axoon, that allows you to connect the tablet to a Sony MPF battery. You just place it behind the actual tablet. You only get one port because it's an iPad and that's USB-C to connect it via the cage to the battery. So that's the power for the iPad. But on the back of the cage, you have several ports so you can run a cable from the battery grip to the monitor. So you can power the iPad and power the monitor from the same MPF battery. Just to be sure, I use bigger MPF 970s. Either that or just sometimes I put a V-mount battery with you know gaffer tape straight on the C-stand and connect the monitor with a USB-C cable and that's that. What I don't like are the buttons. They're designed in such a way that you can feel them in order to adjust the intensity of brightness and go through the menu, like so. But they feel flimsy. So watch out for that if you don't damage them by, by mistake. They, they feel like they could come off at any time. The material of the monitors is aluminium. It's rough, it's cold, it seems durable. It's just a bit glossy, so you, can, you may get fingerprints on it easily. I use it on set as an assistant monitor, so I couldn't care less if it has fingerprints or not. But if you use it in your home office, if you have a clean setup and want everything to be super premium, just make sure to clean it because it does get fingerprints on it a lot. This goes in my cases from now on on all my shoots and either I put it on the table, connect it to my transmitter or connect it to the camera via the HDMI. It's a great way to monitor the camera, the script via the prompter or just plug it in a laptop and see the shot list, some references or even the client brief. Going off script a bit, I use it, I like it, I recommend it, and I think it's a must for anyone trying to up their game. However, whenever you try to add anything extra on top of your existing gear, that's extra time to set up, extra cables, extra batteries, and if you're a one-man band or even have an assistant, it just adds 10, 15, 20 minutes more to set up everything. So I only recommend the things I use and I shot a bunch of courses recently and I needed something to see the prompter. The client needed to see what is happening on set, behind the camera, you know, whether I was following the interviewee with the, the script. So it came in handy. So if you do want to up your game, these are great monitors. I use them on every shoot. But make sure every time you, you introduce new tech, new gear to your setup, it's going to require extra manpower to carry them is going to require extra time to set up 
extra cables, extra batteries. So keep that in mind.